Hi everyone, it's Satisha from Simple Crowdfunding. For today's interview, I'm here with Ivo Gospodinov. I hope I've got that right. You can correct me if I haven't. Um, Ivo is the founder and um, CEO of a company called Stakekeepers, and we will talk about that in a little while. Just a little bit of background. Um, I met Ivo about five years ago um, at a property event. And Evo and his company, Evo Miro and, and their company were the first to raise on an equity basis through simple crowdfunding. And a crazy amount of stuff has happened since. And um, that's why we wanted to get Evo onto um, our interviews to tell his story. So before we start, Evo, hi, thank you for, for joining me today. Uh, Tuksha, thank you for having me and uh, yeah. Uh, I mean that you 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 made a spot on introduction, so I I don't know what else to add to that. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's, there's you got, <laughs> you got the family name right. You know, it's no 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 concerns. <laughs> <laughs> That's always good. So Ivo, um, for people who might not know you, um, we met when you ran a company called Win Win Lettings, um, and we'll talk about the the raise in a minute. But now um, you run a company called Stakekeepers, don't you? So can you just tell us briefly a little bit about your background, where you're from, um, and um, we can get going from there. Um, yeah, definitely. So if we need to get into the technicalities, uh, the company was Win Win Lettings and uh, the, our new legal entity is um, uh, Win Win PropTech. And uh, the brand names of the, of the first company it was Win Win Keeper, and uh, the brand name of this company is uh, Stay Keepers. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, background uh, originally, I'm from Bulgaria, and uh, we've been in the UK with uh, my business partner and brother Miro for I think already 11 or 12 years. And uh, yeah, we started our property journey approximately six, six and a half years ago. And uh, I think approximately that time or maybe half a year or a year later, we, we, we met each other at, uh, at the property event. And uh, yeah, we, we were inspired that uh, at that time we were working in the, in the, in the, in the security space. We were uh, security officers and uh, close protection uh, officers. And uh, we, we were inspired to start our own property company. And initially we focused on property management. And um, after a lot, of, uh, a lot of learnings along the way and you know, realizations, we uh, established ourselves as a more of a technology company. So for those of you who don't know Ivo, um, he talks about the security business. So Evo is a giant. Um, so actually, I'm going to rename this interview the tall and small interview. Um, because for those of you who know me, I'm not exactly large. Um, and it's quite funny when we actually meet up, there is a massive difference between us. Um, but sort of getting back to it. So let's talk about win-win um, first and the race that you did. So that was a rent to rent opportunity, a cash flow opportunity, wasn't it? That was your first crowd raise many years ago. Um, what happened with that? I mean, it's, it's uh, at that particular point in time, initially when we started the business, we were focusing on on a model where we were, we were, we were renting a property and then we were uh, leveraging on that property on a, on a, on a, uh, a room lets or we were leveraging on a, on a short lets. And uh, it was the moment where we actually realized that uh, it, it's a quite capital intensive um, business model to run and you require tons of capital in order to um, pay the deposits, refurbish the properties and uh, uh, all of that. And uh, we, were, we were in our path to actually reposition ourselves as a, as a property management company at that mm -hmm. particular point in time. But um, at, the, at that point in time, I think that you, you got the platform life and uh, you said you should do a race with us and uh, we just packaged, I can't remember, it was a building with a couple of properties and uh, 
yeah, I think that we 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 had it for two years, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, yeah, de definitely it was interesting uh, uh, experience creating the, the the financial models and going through the first crowdfunding experience uh, that that we had, and at that particular point in time, uh, five six years ago, we were still uh, green as uh, entrepreneurs, and uh, it was a uh, definitely experience that. Uh, uh, added value to our to our entrepreneurial journey and uh, I think not I think but I know that one of the investors in that particular uh, crowdfunding deal actually became an uh, equity investor with uh, with uh, with us and uh, he's still on the journey with us so uh, yeah extremely grateful to to actually find our first angel through uh, to, through to, through you and your platform so thank you for that you're very welcome. And, and that's what it's about, isn't it? The, the thing about crowdfunding is it allows you to extend your reach and to tap into people who support what you do. Um, and that's really important, isn't it? Definitely. I mean, that um, uh, we're keeping in touch uh, through, through, the, through the years and, you know, it's, uh, you have added uh, a critical advice at particular junctions and uh, that he really added value to the company and we keep, we've been having that conversation going and uh, with some of the investors into that particular deal that we had at that particular point in time so I mean um, 100% and uh, yeah it's all about relationships and uh, um, crowdfunding really it, it, it allows you to uh, to, to, to meet people and uh, people to understand who you are and uh, <clears throat> shifting from property management into, into prop tech and I'm sure that we're going to touch base on that a little bit uh, shorter but um, yeah um, that's, that's um, a relationship trying to build relationship from uh, not knowing venture capital people and angels, it's extremely difficult, but the crowdfunding actually is allowing you to uh, present yourself, present your project, um, you know, uh, meet the people uh, who are behind the, the particular uh, campaign that you're doing. So it's, yeah, it's a completely different experience and uh, definitely great. So moving from property management to prop tech is actually a fairly substantial leap. So what made you move from one to the other? I mean, in, uh, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we don't have business background. We are first time founders and uh, my business partner has masters in finance and uh, that makes us a very, very strong team, especially in the early, early stages where we didn't have big team around us to complement our, our uh, weaknesses. And um, uh, initially starting with property management, we had to wear multiple hats and we needed to do uh, everything. And then along the way with, with, with growing that property management business is so much and you know, it's, uh, let's say that the cash flow doesn't allow it to hire full-time team members, etc. So we had to find ways to automate and to um, leverage on technology. And initially we didn't have technology team, but we were leveraging on external software as a service uh, uh, mm -hmm. products and uh, that allows us to really really scale the, the amount of work between the number of people who are doing the particular uh, the particular work and uh, step by step we start creating something like an ecosystem of products and at one point in time we we said I mean we are scaling and so uh, we are reaching a couple of hundred properties already uh, we have started to build team around us, but still that infrastructure is not strong enough to to hold and you know do things at, at, at scale. And then decided that bring initially one technology person in house, and uh, mm -hmm. he's going to focus on integrating through API the different uh, uh, softwares. And uh, then we we realized that you know that's amazing, and we can continue scaling, and uh, we can do it for ourselves. And then drop on us that it's a realization. Actually, we are solving a very serious problem for us. Uh, actually, there is uh, individuals initially, and then companies, institutional landlords that uh, not necessarily have the tools 
for the particular services that uh, let's say that we are focused and you know we have expertise uh, in and uh, why we don't uh, create a platform and uh, uh, leverage on that platform and uh, that platform can allow us to acquire clients and uh, institutional clients so we can increase our portfolio from a couple of hundred properties to hundreds of thousand properties and this is yes. how naturally uh, things have evolved into into yeah. coming from uh, property management to a, to a, to a prop tech uh, company. So let me um, ask you, because this is what um, the, result, the result of that is stake keepers, isn't it? Yes. So for people who don't know what stake keepers is, tell me what stake keepers does. So stake keepers is a... You can you can uh, you can imagine stay keepers uh, as being a, a central hub which allows institutional residential landlords, student accommodation, built rent owners, operators to um, allocate their inventory into that central hub. And on the other side, um, we can market that inventory onto platforms mm -hmm. like um, Airbnb, Booking.com, Expedia, Goda. And then we have spot a home and, um, and, and home like, which are not short led but mid led. And then mm -hmm. we have platforms like Zupua, Right Move, uh, On the Market, and uh, uh, other platforms in the US and Southeast Asia, which are depending on where the client's portfolio is. But uh, ultimately, we are a central hub that we are allowing institutional landlords to advertise on if they're not already using uh, a particular channel. So this central centralized hub, in terms of the scale of it, it's not a small operation, is it? So how many room bookings, for example, have you processed? So to, to give a perspective, so we have two main verticals that we are focusing on. We, we have the short led arm of the business where we are providing uh, um, certain level of logistics, so communication with the client and uh, logistics with uh, external service providers or with the teams of the institutional landlords uh, on the ground. So we have um, 1,000, 1,300, 1, properties at the moment, which we're managing on a short led basis. Mm -hmm. And we have 300,000 properties, which we are not providing logistics and, uh, and, uh, uh, agile communication for the shortlets, but we are just advertising them and um, we, are, we are generating, uh, it's, it's more like a lead generation service for the institutional landlords from platforms that they are not using. But to give you a perspective on one side, we have uh, a, a thousand few hundred and on the other side, we have uh, 300,000 and uh, the, the marketing vertical that we have, it's um, pretty much worldwide. And that was going to be my next question. So how many countries are you in already? So in the UK, we are approximately in 60 cities. Uh, it's yes, yeah, 60 something cities uh, on, on the marketing uh, service that we are providing. And in terms of countries, early this year, we enter in the, the USA and currently we're entering uh, Spain, France, Germany. So the whole approach and uh, the translation which is taking place, uh, which is taking place prior to approaching the institutional landlords, it's really something new for us. But uh, yeah, it's it's quite exciting at the same time. And I think that the, ultimately uh, building the the sales machine uh, was the pivotal point where we we decided, okay, actually. Um, we're not going to wait for our next round of investment, but we're going to go and we're going to uh, start approaching the, the, the 50,000 companies or 100,000 companies that are, that are out there in order to achieve the results that we are, uh, that, that we are after. But That's yeah, great. But, and but, you've, you've actually had something like um, 250,000 room bookings through your platform already, haven't you? Yes, yes, yes. So in terms of the... In this is for the short short term uh, yeah. vertical yes 
but yeah, pandemic was interesting, uh, interesting one uh, for for us, and uh, yeah, it's it's interesting entering in the pandemic and then you know exiting the the, the pandemic. But uh, yeah. So tell me about that. Um, so when you entered the pandemic, room bookings in particular probably took a nosedive, didn't they? But it was like how did you deal with it and what has been the result of it coming out the other side? It was like a baseball bat in the in the face pretty much. So <laughs> we were anticipating maybe a couple of weeks before the before the first lockdown that you know it's uh, we're gonna get hit hard and you know it's we pretty much uh, try to uh, prioritize our, our, our costs and uh, ensure that, you know, it's we are optimized. And uh, uh, initially when we got hit 95% uh, below what, what it's supposed to be um, generated in terms of number of bookings, revenue and so on. So it was an interesting uh, experience, but uh, luckily to, to, to our revenue management team, uh, we adapted it uh, uh, quite well and quite quickly, and um, yeah, we we increase our average uh, stay. At that particular point, we were focused only on the short list, but we we increase our average stay from couple of days, couple of nights to uh, one month average. Um, mm -hmm. We we started uh, uh, different collaborations with the different NHS trusts in order to provide accommodation for the for the key workers um, changing our revenue management strategy you know dropping uh, the, the nightly rates tremendously and um, yeah it, it, it was interesting but um, ultimately the government support uh, have really uh, added value and uh, really saved us as a, as a as a company as a as, as an organization which you know will be forever grateful and uh, um, looking forward to actually repaying all of the assistance that the government actually uh, have, um, have, have provided. But interesting enough, because we were pushed that hard, uh, we actually start working on the, um, how we can do what we are doing at a much bigger scale. Mm -hmm. and, uh, ultimately, this is where we actually identify that if we are doing, if we're providing just short led services through, through the technology platform, we are leveraging only on a very small fraction of, uh, of the portfolio of the institutional landlords because there is a certain planning restrictions and not all of their properties can be uh, used for a short lets, uh, but just the ones that have the correct license, et cetera, et cetera. And so uh, this is where we realize, but we need to actually open up for the midterm stays and uh, the long term stays, and it's it, it's really the pandemic here for, um, uh, added value in, in in that direction. And uh, then we start building the sales machine, the sales ops machine that I was talking about. And uh, I mean, we emerged out of the pandemic in a completely different, uh, completely different light. And uh, yeah. Um, so before before actually launching on Cedars, um, I think it was 10th of July, uh, we have something like 270 something percent growth since um, January. So yeah, it's we are, we are hitting record levels of, uh, of, of units and, and, and revenue. And uh, yeah, it's a definitely interesting experience. But what I'm trying to say is the pandemic was, uh, it's, a, it's a terrible thing, but it hit really added value to, to, to our business. Yeah, it's, it's quite interesting because I know we've spoken about this um, in terms of how the pandemic has affected different businesses in different ways. Um, and the one thing is it does make you rethink everything, doesn't it? Um, when, you know, all of a sudden you get that baseball bat in the face and you have to sort of just completely review everything and get back and you, you do tend to go into fight mode don't you because I know for us as a platform things did sort of cool down a little bit um, because people went the properties weren't moving as fast um, overall finance was taking longer and that type of thing but actually you just focus on the things you can focus on and ride it out which which makes a huge difference doesn't it so um, so it's been interesting and coming out the other side, it does 
give you a very different perspective, doesn't it? Definitely, and I think that, you know, it's uh, very early in the pandemic, we learned a valuable lesson that, uh, so overall, and again, maybe it's a positive, maybe it's a negative, uh, but uh, we are we're extremely agile. So we have multiple verticals and uh, we, we always thinking about that it's, uh, it's the, the resourcefulness that is critical and not that much the resources and uh, a majority through, through time, majority has been bootstrapping and uh, we have had support from a uh, few angels and uh, prior the pandemic, a couple, couple of months before the pandemic, uh, a London VC company, PrevCap, um, they have invested half a million into, into, into what we are doing. And, uh, uh, but, but, but other than that, we are, we are, we are quite agile and uh, the way, when the pandemic hit us, we wanted to make changes extremely fast. And actually, we didn't take in consideration the human factor on the, and it's not the other side, it's actually on our side and our team members. And uh, uh, actually, we, we got them stressed out a little bit. So we, we deployed things and, you know, it's, we, we, we orchestrated changes and uh, we didn't have clear communication plan in place. So mm -hmm. definitely, you know, it's, uh, we were like slapped on the hand and, you know, it's the team members was, you know, everything is great, but maybe let us know next time if you're making changes or adjustments, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. So, I mean, it's the, the whole journey, you know, it's, uh, we, we jump from property management to prop tech, but uh, there's so many, because we are first time founders and we are building the, the company uh, uh, bottom up rather than top down with practical experience. Uh, we've been spinning wheels for, uh, you know, quite a bit of time before we we have certain realizations about uh, business as usual, about creating processes, about uh, uh, implementing the new processes in the business as usual in an effective way in order that people were adopting it, etc. So uh, that was another one that uh, it, it's a lesson learned, lesson learned for us. That's really good to know. So... Let me ask you, so you mentioned Cedars, and um, so you've come five years on, you're now doing another race for stakeholders, aren't you? Um, and we've obviously spoken about it, and going from a raise of £30,000 five years ago for a rent-to-rent -rent business to over a raise of 500000 on a valuation of close to 30 million. That's a massive difference in five years. And it's been a massive hard graft for you, hasn't it, to get to this position. What would you say are or have been your key learnings along this journey over the last few years? It's a good question. <laughs> it's a good, very good question. <laughs> uh, I mean, it, it, it's, it's a combination of things. Um, I, I strongly believe and, uh, you know, we have spoken about uh, personal growth, personal development, uh, uh, visualizing impossible things. And, uh, and, and actually, the question that we have had through time was um, how we can achieve exit of 100 million. And, you know, it's... Um, uh, another question that we have asked very early, even on our property uh, property management journey, is, is how we can impact uh, uh, the number was what was the number ten million or a, or, a, or a twenty million people's lives in a, in a positive way, mm -hmm. and uh, by asking those questions, uh, certain answers start popping out from here and there and uh definitely it's not a it's, it's, it's not a straight line but uh uh keeping track on a, on, on a, uh companies and platforms in silicon valley predominantly and also the uk tech uh, uh tech space have definitely uh helped me to to understand the power of partnerships the power of growth hacking the power of uh um, identifying uh, who is that ideal partner, partner that uh, uh, potentially is going to be leading to a successful exit at a particular point in time and you know it's what are the steps that we need to be um, 
taking uh, going in, in that direction, the adoption of objectives and key results as a, as a main goal setting methodology. And uh, I mean, it's, it's a combination of things and then the team members around me. I mean, that I'm, I can be strong in a particular, uh, in a particular skill set about pulling in a particular direction uh, into, into, into the future. But uh, if I don't have a team who is around me and really complementing my weaknesses, I mean, they're going to be just spinning around. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, we have amazing team of, uh, of, of executives and uh, directors that um, are really aligned with what we're doing and uh, where we are going. And, uh, and then you know, translating that that vision that we are having to the to the supervisors and the frontline uh, uh, team members, and yeah, I think it's a combination of uh, combination of all. And your team is international, isn't it? Yes. So I forget we had uh, we we actually extracted the stats uh, when we were applying for one of the property property awards, and uh, we had something like. Uh, Oh, gosh, uh, 37 countries and uh, I forgot how many languages, uh, but <laughs> yeah, it's, really, it's really diverse. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just wonderful, isn't it? Because then you get different perspectives as well, don't you? Yeah. And so it's like you've got your own crowd environment just within your business. And then to push that out to the bigger crowd is also huge, isn't it? Especially for this type of business um, in terms of room rentals, if people follow and love what you do as a business, then they're more likely to use your services. Um, and so that's always a really interesting one for me. So um, what- if I, can, if I can compliment on what you have just said, you know, it's we, we always been focused a little bit more on the B2B side. So we, we have the institutional landlords in, in mind and uh, understanding that they have, let's say, void periods across large portfolios that is causing them hundreds of thousands or millions of, uh, of pounds that are not utilized. And, you know, it's uh, uh, enabling those spaces and allowing uh, 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 guests from our around the world or, 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 or our local travel or uh, the key workers to actually utilize those spaces at, at, at a price that is uh, competitive. That has been our, our angle and it's, it's all about providing that value propositions and uh, yeah, sorry, I, I got sidetracked a little bit. <laughs> no, it's absolutely fine. Either it's absolutely fine. It's really good to know. And I think sometimes, and for everyone who's growing a business and is in this entrepreneurial space, it's always good to have a different viewpoint, isn't it? And understand what others are going through and have gone through in order to get to where they are. Um, and I find it absolutely fascinating because we, we do talk regularly, don't we? We share ideas all the time. Um, and just being able to be part of and, and watch your journey for the last five years has been quite spectacular. So I think that's that's absolutely wonderful. You could um, kind of, thank you. <laughs> you're very welcome. So um, what would you say has been like, if there were two things that have been the hardest over the last five years, what would you say they were? Uh, my my own mindset, my own mindset, and uh, you know, it's identifying uh, my blind spots, overcoming my ego uh, when I'm in the, in the sessions with uh, our our executive uh, directors. I think those two are the main the main hurdles. Uh, everything else, if you have the the right team around you and uh, you have the the fire on the inside it's it, it's possible but uh i think those two three things were my my my, my main blockers and you know breaks and uh yeah and i'm still working on those and you know it's, uh, <laughs> it's not perfect but uh, yeah i'm conscious conscious of them and i'm working deliberately and uh yeah 
But actually, a part of it is just being aware of them in the first place. Once you're aware of them, you have the ability to do something about it, right? Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. And on the other, on the other side, what has been like? There are two things that are just so memorable, and you think that was just the most amazing thing, the most amazing day. What would they be? Question. I th I think. Um landing our venture capital investments and again you know people are talking about it you should not be celebrating when you're fundraising but you should be celebrating when you deliver on the promises uh, upon fundraising uh, for 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 me for us that was a really a big milestone because i think we have something like 400 or 400 and something uh, either rejections or, or no replies uh, through different angels, angel groups and venture capital companies. And uh, it, it could be lack of experience, it could be not being prepared, it could be we being still property management company rather than technology company, but uh, having so many rejections and actually uh, going through that was uh, really a, a memorable moment. And, uh, and the second is uh, the realization uh, when, when, when COVID hit that we had to work from home and, uh, you know, putting the same amount of hours, 10, 12 hours, uh, it, it was still on, but our setup and technological enablement allows us actually to achieve even better result when we were actually running things from the office. And... Uh, uh, th that realization that actually I don't need to live in the office, I don't need to sleep in the office, but actually I can be at home, I can take 15 minute break, I can, I can cuddle my daughter and, uh, and so on and so on. So I would say that uh, the moment that you know, I got that as a realization, it's, uh, I think it's a big win and it's not necessarily directly um, business related. I mean, it is business related, but uh, the, the realization for me is more on a personal level, but yeah. It's, it's, it's so true. And I think so many people have come to that realization, haven't they? So our business, a lot of us um, have always had the ability to work from home because of the nature of our business. Um, but I think a lot of other people have realized that actually they don't need to be in the office every day um, they can blend it with working from home covid has been really good for that because it's allowed people to rebalance in terms of work versus personal time and it's not that people don't work when they're at home they do they probably get more done like you said because it's focus time but it's it just feels less pressured doesn't it sometimes so and that that's always a good thing so having that that is one of the, the blessings because uh, it's just taught us a different way, hasn't it? And having right. a technology business as well means you can enable that much faster, doesn't it? Absolutely. And, you know, it's, uh, I think that we are quite fortunate and I'm forever grateful that, you know, we are, we are a technology business and uh, we are able to do what we are doing and, uh, yeah, the same, the same with you and, uh, and the platform as well. So hmm. the seed is raised. I just want to briefly talk about that. Your stake keepers raised. So the campaign hasn't even launched yet, has it? And you're already over 40% funded, which is wonderful to see. Um, we're going to be doing a couple of clubhouse sessions um, next week. So the first one is Tuesday at 10 o'clock and then Wednesday at 430 so if anyone does have any questions directly for Evo, and I know Evo, you're gonna be covering um, areas such as what should go into your raise um, plan, your investment plan, what are valuations, what should you consider from a business standpoint and a number of other things. We'll cover those topics up. Um, we'll cover those topics um, as part of the conversation. So if people do have any questions specifically, then join us on Clubhouse. I'll put the um, details in the description of this interview. And then also the link to 
the Cedars Rays for stake keepers um, will also be in the description. So if anyone wants to find out more, then you have the opportunity to do that. So Evo, before we wrap up, is there any sort of final words, anything else that you want to share? I mean, I'm, we have covered quite a bit in the interview already, but uh, we are on the journey. Um, I believe that we are building something uh, which is um, extremely valuable for the target audiences that we are having. Um, I, I think that we are, we, we are just starting and I think that it's going to be much more. So I would love uh, more like-minded people to, to join us on the journey one way or another. So I look forward to uh, uh, potentially meeting new people and uh, sharing that uh, journey and uh, success together. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate your time. And um, well, I'll be talking to you next week a couple of times on Clubhouse anyway, and um, we can carry on the conversation there. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Atuksha, for having me.